it still makes my blood so warm And it still fills me up with scorn But maybe we could join the circus If the boss could us to jerk us What do you know? Let's jump on an ice floor What do you know? There's a loon on the lagoon Record the sound on the bridge of ice came from uh, Chippewa, and, uh, which is in the shadow of Niagara Falls, and uh, there was just no music scene down there when I was growing up. So it was just inevitable to move to the Big Smoke. My brother went to school up here and, and lived up in Toronto, and so I would come up on weekends when I was a, a teenager, and you know, it was a fantasy place in Toronto. And I'd used to, used to come up here to a lot of concerts, but it was kind of a no-brainer, like you, any eventuality that uh, you know you got to go to to the big smoke or the big city to sell your wares or to to determine what you're going to do with your life, you know. 
I'm gonna. I think there was three versions of the gas station. Am I right? Was there not a first version, yeah. which was sort of the basement, and there was the city version? Yeah, I used to live at 155 Liberty Street. It's a warehouse, right? Okay. My first times coming to Toronto, and living here, I'd go. That was like in the warehouse district, you know, King and Dufferin, Liberty Street, Liberty Street Village, and uh, I'd see these warehouses and I'd fantasize and think, oh man, only the cool people could live there, you know, the artists, and it's like, wow, so neat. Never, never. And uh, then friends were living in that warehouse down in the basement, and uh, they moved out, offered me the, their old unit. And it was like, whoa. So I got into that, paying, I don't know, it was 340 square feet in the basement, but I could make as much noise as possible, and there was a little window there too. And um, so I lived in there for a couple of years, and uh, then Don and I pooled our resources, bought an eight track, and uh, put a wall up, like a partition, in, in that, in my, basement apartment and it's like so one half was the live room the other was the control room we are uh, on the tracks uh, <laughs> near the old rock and roll palace that uh, the King and Dufferin neighborhood and and uh, this was this was the old play the playgrounds of uh, moi when he used to have the rock and roll studio over there when they come to me, they say, Papa boy, we want to play some rock. Dreamers, schemers, to quote Kim Mitchell and the Max Websters. Well, dreamers, eh? Aren't we all dreamers? What a lovely thing to dream, to dream in revelry. Yeah. Once you lose a dream, you're dreaming. I think that's when uh, you kind of give in, give in to the worms down below waiting for you. Whoa, 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 whoa. We had we had purchased a 16 track, a reel to reel, and mixing board, and we were getting popular in the basement, recording with the 8 track, right? But it was too big, like the the gear. To, to actually put in that basement and use it. So we are looking to expand. And so we're looking around for a place and uh, actually we checked out a, like a warehouse space uh, that uh, Daryl from Chemical, remember a Chemical recording oh, yeah. studio? Oh, yeah. In the same building, they were gonna rent us out a space. And we were all set, but there were no windows or anything. And, and we were ready to sign the papers, we were going to. And, and, and Chemical had already taken another spot in the same building. And we thought, well, this is kind of cool. It's good enough for those guys. They were just starting out. And um, we were all set. Then we got a phone call saying, guys, can't rent it out to you. But I'll show you another spot, the real estate agent. And so we're all bummed out. So he takes us across the street, 53 Fraser, shows us the room, and uh, what a glorious room it was. And, uh, and it was like, yeah, this is the place. So it was like a rundown old warehouse building. It's glorious, pretty glorious building. It's like a castle on the outside. Yeah, that, that seedy kind of area, but it was still home. You, know? you could stare out the window from the control room, You'd be looking out the control room glass into the live room, into the other window that looked out at Lake Ontario, and I could see Toronto Island from there. And you could always see the Canadian flag flying at the the, the CNE. Yeah. So it was a good thing if you're a patriot. <laughs>